Hello everyone, this is Lindsay6 here, and we are going to be going back to something I did before, but uh, I thought I'd try and improve on it. Uh, and this is a tutorial thingamy what's it for uh, sprays for Gary's mod, Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress 2, and other similar games. So, uh, the first thing that we will need, uh, of course, is an image. I've already have one prepared, I'll show you it in a minute, but apart from that we need some things to edit it with. Now, there are a few editing programs you can use. My mouse is what what's going on, it's, I don't know. Um, uh, it's okay now. Uh, right, so there's a few programs we can use. Um, I've got a couple open here. If you've got Photoshop, use that by all means, but I don't go out and buy it specifically just for this. Um, these other ones that I've got open uh, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, shortened to GIMP. Oh, how hilarious are the people who made this. Um, yeah, that's that's the one that I use, and that's the one I'll be using for this tutorial, but you can also use something called Paint.net. I've just done a quick search on the internet, just to show you. It's not difficult to find, you literally just search the name, and Paint.net's the second one down, the first one has nothing to do with it, but yeah. And then we also need one last thing, because uh, these uh, things alone can't do enough, and I know in my previous video I said about getting add-ons for these. For this method, you don't need to use add-ons, it's fine. Um, and this is called VTF Edit, just search it, the first thing there, and that will just be what turns your image into something that can be used by the game, because uh, it doesn't use a sort of a more standard format that you would, most people would be familiar with. Okay, that good? Cool. Next step. So here we go. We have this image here, and I've just chosen it because it has an outline, a uh, thick outline and different colour between the outline and the outside, so it should make it slightly easier. And uh, well, the first thing we need to do, um, we don't need to do it, but I'm just going to show you anyway because you might want it, is basically getting rid of the background. This is just, if you've used these things before, you probably already know how to do it, but You've got all these options on the left when you select your um, fuzzy select tool is the one I'm using, which is select a contigu contiguous. I don't know what that word means. Please tell me what it means in the comments or wherever you want. You can you could you could tell me where however you like. I I, I don't control you. You could you could send me a telegram, or you could uh, write it on the next uh, can of fizzy drink that I drink. Although you might be a bit late with that one, because I'm just about to open one after this video. Uh, on the basis of colour. Shortcut key, U. I did not know that, and it's not working. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically, when you do that, boom, you see it selects a continuous area on similar colours. But, as you might be able to see, the dotted line is, uh, well... It's not got the whole thing. So, if we just control Z that to get rid of it, what we need to do is change the threshold, which is this thing on the left here. Um, I'm going to turn anti aliasing off just because sometimes it can cause problems with outlines. If you have an outline that's not that's slight, it can cause it to keep going. So, if we put the threshold up, you see it selects more. Um, what was the. I'm trying to remember what it was that worked really well. Um, I think it was about 90 something? Is that 97? That looks about right, yeah. And that gets most of it, and then if we just change that to add to the current selection, and then just add in all of... oh dear. We'll have to turn that one down in a second. Add in all of these bits. Um, that one. And that one. Okay, and then if... and before we press delete, as I was about to do, on, we, what we need to do is add transparency to the background, otherwise if I do press delete as I will now, it's just white. So we right click on the right here, and it just go where it says add alpha channel, and alpha channel just means transparency. So if we do that now, we get squares, and those squares mean it's going to be transparent, but they obviously can't show real transparency. And then I'll just see, can I select, oh, uh, undo that thing. Um, yeah, yeah, that's keep selecting too much. So I'll just turn the threshold. Actually, no, I'll finish off the letters first. 
Uh, to, uh, oh, pardon me. Ah, uh, goodness sake. Ah, mice. <sighs> uh, why do we keep doing that? Right, threshold down. There we go. And delete that. And of course, I'm doing this quickly, but the Im this particular image is such a high resolution to start with, it won't make much difference. Just clear up that little area there. Um, yeah, I can't see anything more. I mean, you, you probably can see bits. So if I zoom right in to say up here, you can see it's kind of brown around the outside rather than black. But this image is too large for what can fit in the game because there's a limit on the size um, of the image you can use. Um, it's about 500 and something kilobytes. I'm not sure exactly. Um, so the image is going to have to be shrunk, but first we're going to change the canvas size, so we'll have the width... Well, actually, to keep the image as large as possible first, actually, what I should be doing is uh, auto-cropping the image. And that just cut... if I just undo that, you see it cut a bit off the top and sides. Okay, so now, canvas size, and change that so it's a square, because it has to be a square. That's one of the first things. And then, go on image, scale image, and we need our width and height to be to a power, or 2 to the power n. Or in other words, um, basically it's the numbers where when you multiply it by starting with 2, every number you multiply by 2 goes up. So it starts 2, 4, 8. Wait, I've got that wrong, haven't I? <sighs> no, yeah, 2, 4, 8, 16. 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, okay? But um, going up beyond 512, the image doesn't quite fit most of the time, especially with transparency. So we'll change that to 512, and the image is now this, and sure, it's less, it's not as high quality. Uh, most of that brown's already gone, as you can see, but yeah, the lack of quality doesn't matter because of the size this is going to be. Alright, so we've got this, and now... Uh, oh yeah, by the way, if you right-click, it brings up the menu at the top. I'm just doing that because my toolbox is in the way. So we go File, and then Export As. And... Why has it gone to that folder? Okay. Um, uh, where do I save it normally? Shorty... Where is it? Documents. Um, YT. Is that it? Oh yeah, and you probably see I've already... I tried this out before to make sure it works, and it does. Um, so I'm going to rename that as... I don't know... Blubfish. It really doesn't make any difference. And saving it as a dot .tga. I'm not sh I think it can work with other files, but... TGA just works. Don't. And also I've seen RLE compression doesn't seem to work either. I'm not quite sure why. Um, but if it does work for you, do tell me. Okay, so we've got that. That's pretty good. Next step, I think. Right, so VTF edit right here. So, first off, we need to import, not open, because if we do that, it wants a VMT or VTF. And, uh, well, we don't want that. So, if we go import, and that's changed the file type, and now I have to go and search through my thing to get to it. <coughs> I'm terribly sorry, everyone. And then it's this one? Yeah. Okay. And the important thing is, make sure generate mip maps is off. I'm not sure what the difference of texture type is, going to be honest, but animated texture works anyway. Oh, and we don't need resize because we already did that. If we could, again, you can just take any random image and have it resize it for you. But, of course, the problem there is that it will probably lose quality and, you know, Best to sort it out yourself and make sure everything's right. Now, as you can probably say, I can't zoom that in anymore, I'm sorry, um, that the outline looks kind of horrifying. There are quite a lot of weird looking colours around the outside, but honestly, oh, and I forgot, oh, I forgot to cut some bits out, damn it. <laughs> oh well. Uh, that won't matter, most of this won't matter apart from the bit that I just forgot about because I'm silly. And then we'd save as, which saves it as that, and now. We need to uh, search for the file we need to put it in. Now, if you've got 32-bit windows, 
it will be in program files. If you have 64-bit, it will be in program files times 86. You need to find that out because otherwise things won't work. However, you'll know which kind you have by and um, where the files are. So I go into here and I will see that Steam is in there. We're only saving the one relevant to the kind of windows you have. Um, and then Steam Apps, which is the games, common, and then choose your game. I'm going to use Gary's Mod. Uh, because that's where I normally do these things. And go into Gary's mod again for this one. Then materials, VGUI, or VGUI even, uh, logos, and then call it whatever you want to do. Tutorial shizzle. Save. Okay, that's good. And then this is another thing that I don't know if you have to do it. But uh, I like to do it anyway. It's go into tools, create VMT file, create, save one in logos, save one in UI, and then that should be good. And next up, we are going to test to make sure that this actually works. Back in a sec, guys. Righty ho, guys. Here we are. So, um, generally, it's the same sort of thing. What you do is you go into options, then it's the multiplayer tab, and then you go on import sprite and just go through to wherever it is you saved in your particular game and then our um, tutorial shizzle that's the one and you see it's there and once you've imported it into that file all of your other ones will appear um, in that list uh, so you can ju it makes it much easier for choosing new ones and then apply and OK or you can just press, press OK if you prefer and then to test it and this is quite a good trick because uh, nothing really tells you you can do this um, if you on Team Fortress 2 I know you, when you play single player you can put your sprays up anyway in Gary's mod however you can't what you have to do is make, set up a two player thing and then even if you're not connected to the internet, still do it. I always choose local server just because I am connected to the internet right now and I don't want anyone, any random person to join. Local is local area connection, that is only computers on your actual network can join. And then choose any map. Um, yeah, flat grass. Let's go. And make sure that you've chosen your spray before you load your server thing, game, before you start this. Um, Otherwise, your spray won't appear. You might have some other spray or whatever. And uh, just a second, doodies. Yeah, um, I have this in windowed mode because that's how I normally play it. And also for this recording, I couldn't be bothered to open fraps just to do it separately. So I press that and boom. And you can see just there, I forgot to edit it. Spits out because I'm a fool. But yeah, there's a little brown bit. Okay. This wasn't my best edit of all time, but that's because I was doing it quickly. It's You can go and sort things out better yourself. I just didn't want to waste all of your time. Or t all of your times. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. And um, well, um, I don't know. Ask any questions. Do. Give me feedback. When I say give me feedback, I mean like give me feedback ask tell me what you think of my video honestly you know even if you don't like it please just tell me cuz i can't improve other otherwise can i and so until next time guys goodbye